Good morning, New Hope. And all on the live stream as we're here on another beautiful Sunday morning coming together to praise the Lord. The Word of God says, I will give you thanks for you answered me. Amen. You have become my salvation. Amen. <laughs> the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Amen. The Lord has done this. The Lord has done this. <laughs> and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Amen? Rejoice and be glad. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will, we will, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you guys are glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? If you're able to stand with us and help us usher in the presence of God, we want to celebrate a great gift that God has given us. A gift that a lot of us take for granted, but if we're constantly reminded about it, we know how grateful we really are to God. And that gift is life. That gift is life that he has given us. The ability to wake up every morning, to see a new day, to see the beautiful world that he has created for us, to see this beautiful weather and to come here and rejoice in his name. Hallelujah. When I think of your goodness and your love, being kindness, and I know your grace, giving me life when I see your favor over me I'm grateful and I know my saviors giving me life he's giving me exceedingly abundantly overflowing more than I could dream, you're giving me life. Hallelujah. We're going to sing that again. When I think of your goodness and your loving kindness, hallelujah, he's given me life on this place. When I think of your goodness and your love, being kindness, and I know your grace is giving me when I see your favor over me, I'm grateful and I know my Savior giving me life. He's giving me life exceedingly, abundantly, overflowing, overwhelming, more than I can dream. You're giving me. Thank you, God. Now I see, I see you're for me, you're for and, me I and I believe you're for you're me, for waiting for me, waiting for me every, morning. every morning, giving me life, giving me life. Giving me life. he's giving me We're going to sing that one more time. Now I believe, now I believe you're, for me, you're for me, and I can see, I can see new mercy waiting, waiting for me every morning. Every morning giving, me life, giving me life, giving me life, he's giving me life, exceedingly, exceedingly life, life, abundantly, overflowing, overflowing. More 
Hallelujah. God has given us the blessed life. And we're living that blessed life. Blessed life now that God has graciously given us. Hallelujah. Let me hear it say. You've given me life. I got the blessed life now. Jesus, you're alive in me. I've got the blessed life now. I've got the blessed life now. I've got the best life now. Oh, Jesus, you're alive in me. I got the blessed life now. The blessed life. Living the blessed life now. I got the blessed life now. Oh, Jesus, I'm alive. Again. I got the blessed life now. Living the blessed life now. I got the blessed life now. Oh, Jesus, I'm alive in you. I got the blessed life now. Living the blessed life now. I got the blessed life now. Oh, Jesus. One more time. I got the blessed life now. I got the blessed life now. The blessed life now. I got the blessed life now. I got the blessed life now. Oh, Jesus, I'm alive. He's given me life, exceedingly life, abundantly, overflowing, overwhelming, more than I can dream. You're giving me. Thank you, God. My, my, my. Overflowing, overwhelming life. The scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 4 through 14. Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 4 through 14, and it reads thus. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, uh, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find, you'll find some fish there. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciples whom Jesus uh, loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. <laughs> the other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and uh, some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Amen. May God add a blessing, reading, hearing of his holy word. Let us pray. Lord, we just come to you today thanking you for this day which you have made. We are rejoicing, being glad in it. You are overwhelming. You are overflowing. You are 
God, you are loving, caring, and gracious. Come by, Lord. Come by and bless our hearts with your presence and your love, grace, and mercy. We pray and ask it to the glory of God, the Father, through the precious Son and through the Holy Spirit. We do pray and give thanks. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. In this wonderful spring day, what a beautiful day. Isn't this a wonderful day the Lord has made? What a beautiful day outside. A glorious new morning God has blessed us to see. Amen. And so we're thankful for it. And in fact, I guess some folks fought to, fought to get here today because it looked like a whole lot of folks were outside this morning. Amen. But we will see you on the stream. Amen. Well, we're thankful for this day at anyhow and grateful God has given it to us. And with that, just want to share with you a couple of brief notes of reminder and ministry. I want to remind you that our therapist on staff, Muna Osman, is available to you and to your family. You can contact Muna through contact, by contacting the church office or the contact information provided in our morning announcements before and after worship. Uh, Muna specializes in youth and family therapy and has been a gift to us in the fellowship. And we encourage you, if so applies, to connect with Sister Osmond. Also, want to share with you today that immediately following worship today, our health ministry will be meeting members in the overflow room to share with you information about uh, cancer support and the like. And so we invite you to see them there after worship today for that wonderful information about ministry and about health and wellness. We thank God today for all of the wonderful things the Lord is doing with us and through us. Looking forward to Mother's Day. Amen. Amen, somebody. We thank God Mother's Day is on the way. Let's thank God for mothers. Amen. Amen. On the second Sunday of May, we are looking forward to opportunity to hear reflections on motherhood from women of the congregation. Amen, somebody. And so I want to make sure to invite you to be here on the second Sunday of May as we celebrate motherhood in a very special way here at New Hope. Amen. Amen. We're grateful to God for you today and thankful for your presence with us in worship. And we are grateful to have the opportunity to meet the spirit of the Lord in this place, but also grateful to meet each other. So I invite you to take a moment this time just to welcome someone into worship. Reach out to your neighbor, your seatmate, and just tell them good morning and let them know how grateful and glad you are that they have arrived in this place of praise today. thank God for the fellowship. Amen. And invite you to join us as we prepare to go to God together in prayer. Amen. As we lift up our hearts unto the Lord and send our petitions unto a good and all wise God. You may join us here at the altar. You may remain seated, stand, kneel, whichever posture that you find that 
is most effective in helping you connect with the Lord in prayer. I want to invite you at this time to, to take that posture. And as we go to God in prayer today, we want to remember the prayers of the fellowship. Amen. We want to be thoughtful about those who, if they were here, would say, pray for me. We've been asked to pray for the James family, the father of Lexine James, uh, father-in-law of Reverend J. James, who's passed, and they've asked us to lift their names here at the altar in prayer. <laughs> want to pray for the... <laughs> Y'all caught me. Langley and Anderson families. <laughs> pray for them today. I want to pray for the Ford Williams family. I want to pray for every family. Amen. For all of us standing in the need of prayer. For every community. For individuals. And one and all. For God knows that we need prayer. And we're grateful for a God who hears prayer. Who answers prayer. And so whatever your concern today. Whatever your petition. Your thanksgiving. Your gratitude. We lift those to God because we know God can hear all of us and one of us at the same time. So we thank God for Reverend Stephen Dewberry who comes to lead us today in prayer. Amen. Prayer is so important. Prayer is so important. Hymnologists said it this way. When... My way gets dark and drear. You don't have to worry because God is near. If in your heart there's no song, just keep the faith and keep holding on. Turn your face down fast and pray. Jesus will always make a way. There's a bright side somewhere. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, <clears throat> Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's again, O oh Lord, that we come into uh, this worship to celebrate your name, to praise your holy name, to thank you, Lord, for all you have done for us, for guiding us, for keeping us, for lifting us, for saving us. We thank you and we praise your holy and righteous name. We thank you, Jesus, for your love. For you said, love ye one another. And Lord, we're here this morning loving one another. There are problems in our home, but we love one another. There are problems in our community, church, nation, and world, but we must continue to learn to love one another. That when we turn to each other, not on each other, and to be able to embrace, embrace each other in that love. Lord, the names called this morning are special names. They're special to our hearts that special to our minds that we pray, oh Lord, now that you would touch and heal in the name of Jesus. That you would touch their hearts, their minds, their bodies in the name of Jesus. Heal, Lord, because we know that you're able, because you're Jesus. And besides you, there are no others. We pray, oh God, for our church this morning. Continue to bless us and keep us and galvanize us and lift us and direct us, oh Lord, in the way that you would have us to go. Continue to bless our beloved pastor. Continue to love him and bless him and strengthen him and bless his lovely wife and continue to bless her and keep her, O oh Lord. And then, O oh Lord, we celebrate you this morning because we know that you're a good God. You're a great God. You can do anything but fail. And so this morning, Lord, before we go back to our seats, we know we can declare that we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. And because of your love, Christ, because of your love, Jesus, because of your adoring love, O oh Heavenly Father, we celebrate you this morning. Hear our prayers this morning. Give them, O oh Lord, bless if you please. For it's in his name that we pray. Praise God, hallelujah, and amen.
is a light in the darkness. Anybody know he's a way maker, a miracle worker? We thank God today. Yeah, that is who God is. And we are living witnesses of it. Amen. That every time we look into our lives, we are daily reminded of who God is in our lives. Oh yeah, there's some things we'd like to have better in life. A few things we'd ask God to surely fix, but we cannot deny that God is a way maker. A miracle worker, a light in the darkness. I thank God today. Amen. 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 And as much as God is, and God has given so much to us, by peace and serenity, by su sustaining us through challenging times, through uplift and great times, for goodness in all times, whether those times are good or not so good, God is faithful to us. And so we take opportunity, as the word teaches, at the first of the week, the Bible says to lay by him in store. It means that at the first of the week, the people of God, they, they took the first of their week's harvest. I mean, they harvested their crops for the week and they took the first of that harvest, which are thought to be the best of what they could pluck up from the ground. And they save that first portion. And when Sunday arrived, they took that to the temple and dedicated it to God. And so we counted a privilege and a blessing to be able to return our first fruits to God, to give God, amen, back a portion, the best of what we have, because we want God to know that we do believe that God is a way maker, a, a miracle worker, a light in the darkness. And so our tithe, our offering is a testimony to that. And so these ushers are coming to serve you at this time. And as they do, they invite you to return that tithe and offering, that reminder of God's healing goodness, God's miracle work in your life as we return our tithes and our offerings unto God. If you're online today with us on stream, you can give uh, on our New Hope Church Denver.org website through a secure PayPal link. You can give using the giving app, givelify.com. You can mail in your tithe, for we consider tithe and offering as a way that we respond to God and thankfulness for all God has done for us. God bless you as you give. Amen.
Father, which art in heaven, we thank thee for blessing new hope and its congregation and for all that worship with us. We ask that you would bless these tithes and offerings to uplift your kingdom. We pray in the name of Jesus for giving us this opportunity to give back for what you have done for us. We ask these blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. to encourage you to not listen to what everybody else is saying because they don't know we have to rely and depend on God you know he has the final say The final say. Jehovah has the final say. Oh, tell me who has the final say. Jehovah has the final say. And no matter what the doctor says. Jehovah has the final say. And no matter what the doctor says. Jehovah has the final say.
night today. Reason to fear. Let's thank God for the choir today. And the band, amen. Ryan Thresh got loose over there, didn't he? <laughs> Somebody put some oil on his head this morning. Eh? The Holy Ghost got hold of him. Eh? I saw you over there. Amen. Yeah, we praise God today. Amen. What a wonderful day the Lord made. What a better place to be than to be in the house of God, giving God praise. Amen. Amen. I want to just uh, reiterate this scripture that's been read for you in the 21st chapter of the gospel according to John. And I just want to read just a few of those verses that have been read already today just to find our focus in this morning's word. John 21, this last chapter of the book of John. John is the last of the New Testament Gospels. Amen, amen. Hmm. I'm going to begin at verse 1 and just sort of move through to around about 11. If you found that, why don't you say amen? Amen. If you look and say, hold on. All right, we're there. It says, afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way, Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say it, he wrapped his outer garment around him and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish. For they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said, bring some of what you've just caught. So Simon climbed back in the boat, dragged the net ashore. Large, full of fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Amen? Let's pray together. God, we thank you for this, another privilege to just share in your word. We thank you, God, for how you've shown up in worship. You've blessed our hearts in song, how you've encouraged us in the fellowship across the pews, how you have met us in prayer, O oh God, how you blessed us to return an offering unto you. And now, God, we just ask you to stay with us as we turn into your word, as we seek guidance and direction, as we search for illumination from you, God, as we just strive to grow, close, grow closer to you, for your word to have more meaning in our lives, to be applicable to our journey in ways that would help us to please you and God to be a blessing in this world around us. So God, we ask that you just use this word as you see fit. Use your humble under shepherd in this waiting congregation. And together, God, we may be caught in your word. It's in the precious name of Jesus we ask and pray. And all God's people say together, amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen, amen. I want to preach this morning from this subject, Blueprint of a Believing Church. Will you say that with me? Blueprint of a Believing Church. Amen. Here in the final post-resurrection appearance of Jesus in John's Gospel, we encounter the disciples on the shore of Galilee fishing at night to no avail. They've been out there, the Bible says, all night and caught nothing. So the next morning, Jesus appeared working a miracle, which resulted in a catch of fish too large to haul into the boat. On one level, Jesus has worked a miracle for fishermen. On another, their belief yielding the miraculous catch of fish foreshadowed them as church planters 
and this passage as the blueprint of such a church. They had to be believing because they were fishing at night and family in many ways, so are we. That we, in a sense, are in a night-soaked sea in this world today. That as we look around us, you can't help but notice all the signs that appear that we're just living through a long, tumultuous night. Considering that 99% of us will pay more taxes tomorrow than the wealthiest 1%, it seems to me sometimes like it's night all day long. With ballistic missile launches going on in North Korea and Iran, with gun violence at Ramadan gatherings in Philadelphia, sometimes even the most believing of us sense and feel like there's just a night coming on. And as a result, our belief often falls on deaf ears of those who are jaded by a world resembling a stormy sea. It just so happens, family, that this location where they've gathered at Galilee, where the scene unfolded, is not the same section of the Sea of Galilee where Jesus met Nathaniel and Andrew, Peter and James. No, uh, this section of the sea is one a bit more rocky in its waters, a bit less pristine in its shoreline. They're they're gathered there, there, and best I know, there's no beach on that side of Galilee, only rocks, no soothing shoreline, just rough crashing waves. It's like the times we live in where our tithes become in competition with the rising price of grocery staples. When parents work, weeks are so flooded that making it to work's worship on Sunday can be a struggle. And as if the church doesn't have enough side eyes coming our way, a political candidate has has released a constitution Bible to cover their legal costs. The truth is, though most of us are believing, we stand in a world of rough waters rocking us to and fro from time to time. And so it becomes difficult to think that the church of Jesus Christ, that we'll be able to continue to press forward in this rough and rocky sea. Yet, The good news is, family, though we stand in some rough waters, a believing church can continue to accomplish God's will. And that's what Jesus proves as he shows up to these disciples at Galilee. He reminds them that though you've been out here in the night and though it may appear that things are not going well, you've caught nothing all night long. He says, cast your net on the other side. It says, family, that we have to rethink casting our nets of faith. It means there's no pattern, model, or method of ministry that is eternal. There's no way necessarily to communicate with friends, family, and loved ones that is perfected. The only thing that doesn't change is the message of Christ. But the method has got to be altered every now and then. The the process has got to shift and the the, the patterns have got to pivot that we might meet people where they are in this dark sea called life. But the good news is, family, even with darkness all around, there's a God who will continue to show up. I don't know about you, but I'm just glad that as I've cast my net on the seashores of life, that no matter how dark it may seem, how uneventful it may appear from time to time, there is a God who will keep on showing up. Anybody who can testify today that even in some of your moments of life that seem to be of little reward and no consequence, you're sure that God kept on showing up. Anybody who knows today as you stood on the seashores and heard the waves crashing in, that you know God. God was never far from where you were. I'm just glad today that I can look around my life and testify that whether or not I felt though I had accomplished anything great or awesome, I was never by myself. That we have a God who will always appear even in our midnights and darkness, even when the waves, waves grow rough, we have a God who will show up and help us find the right side of the boat. I think I'll pause right there. I think there's somebody here who ought to just give God a praise today for the moments in life where it looked like nothing you did succeeded but the Lord showed up and said just find the other side of the boat and this thing's gonna be all right amen somebody the Lord appears to these disciples and says I know you've caught nothing but just cast your net 
on the other side. And that is the call to the believing today. That if we are going to fulfill the blueprint of a believing church, that we have to continue to press on and see what God's will shall be. What you mean by that, Pastor? I mean, oh yes, we preach the same Christ. We celebrate the same gospel. But I came by to tell you, there are new ways that we have to continue to do those things. That I am so glad to be a part of a believing church that's willing to seek God's face to pray and hear the Lord lead us in greater ways for the kingdom. I don't know about you, but it seems to me that we've arrived here uh, after a hundred plus years in the history of this great church because you and I stand on the shoulders of some folks who are believing in God to continue to do great and amazing things. What you're talking about, Pastor, I'm talking about the history of a believing church. I'm talking about a congregation that started uh, in what was a mortuary. Why? Because there were some believing folks in there who said it may not look like all we shall be, but God can do great things if we trust him. And they moved from that mortuary up to 23 and Ogden. They purchased a pristine historic building and they built a great ministry. Why? Because they believed in what God was able to do. Can I pause right here and just remind somebody that when you step through these doors here at 37th and Colorado you are seeing a living testimony of some folks who a hundred years ago who were just 13 people walked into a mortuary and said we believe in what God is able to do. Is there anybody here who has ever walked into a moment of your life and didn't see all you thought God would do but you believed that God was able and now you can look back and realize look how far God has brought us from that's the blueprint of a believing church and family we don't stop believing now we got to keep on trusting God uh, that's why church we heard the Lord said oh I know you've been out there working just cast your net on the right side that's why we're going to replace these wall screens with LED panels uh, that's why we're going to share post worship conversations with young adults and that's why young women who don't have health insurance will be able to get mammogram information at the food ministry distribution moment. That's why we'll have people come in here and offer counseling and therapy so they can help their young people proceed through the rough challenges of middle school and high school. That's why when parents said we can't make it out to one more teaching lesson for our children, the young people said that's all right. We'll meet on Sunday after church and we'll call it the vibe. Why? Because they're trying to cast their net on the right side of the boat. Is anybody here who don't mind telling God? thank you that we're a believing church which means we're going to keep on casting this net and see what the Lord will do oh I'm grateful church for the fact that God keeps on showing up and I know God keeps showing up because we are in an era that it's said and documented that fewer and fewer are going to church. That fewer people are uniting with congregations and that others are, are not necessarily seeking God in a, a religious setting. But I came by to tell you, family, I think people are still finding God in the church. I know it because I was here on Resurrection Sunday with a house full of folks. I, I was here on Palm Sunday with a vibrant, full sanctuary of people. But then we turned around and came back here that next week. And the Isle School of Theology installed their first African-American president at the church. And, and then we met the a historic family in Denver, the Phillips family, after they laid their matriarch to rest. And we celebrated with them in fellowship at the church. I, I don't know about you but when I see babies being dedicated and I see folks being baptized it reminds me that though we may not catch all the fish we like if you keep casting your net on the right side I promise you God will make a way somehow because there's still good news down at the church of the living God that there's still joy down at the church there's still peace down at the church there's still fellowship down at the church I, I thank God for the worship stream I'm, I'm glad for Facebook and Instagram. I, I'm grateful for YouTube and the like, but every now and then I want to get myself down to the church. I, I want to be in a pew. I want to press my hand against a member. I want to hear somebody say amen. I, I want to know that somebody's praying beside me and in front of me. I'm grateful today that though the sea gets rocky, we can cast our net on the right side 
and build this blueprint of a believing church. So, so it is that Jesus provides through the presence of these disciples who will become apostles, a blueprint for a believing church. Well, you say, Pastor, we hear all this, but can you explain how in any way that resembles a blueprint? I'm glad you asked. In the fourth verse of this 21st chapter of John's gospel, the scripture says, caught my attention that early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. It says to me, family, that though they had fished all night, these disciples, these who had seen him work miracles, these, these who had seen him actually feed 5,000 with the little boy's lunch, these who had seen miraculous and amazing things in their past, they were there in this moment, had fished all night and caught nothing. But look at this thing. Verse 4 says, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples didn't realize it was him. Interesting. It means to me, family, that these disciples, though catching nothing all night, though having seen miracles and now coming up empty handed, stayed there anyhow. That they must have decided that though we caught nothing last night, when the morning comes, we're going to get back up, go back down to the seashore and try this thing one more time. I came by to testify to somebody today that if we're going to be a believing church, as a matter of fact, if you're going to be a believing household or a believing individual Christian, you got to learn sometimes, family, to not leave the seashore. You can't surrender to the sea. What you mean, pastor? I mean, by the grace of God and provision, I had the privilege in 2020 of going to Galilee. And I went to this very spot where this text evolves. And I came to tell you that it is no serene seashore. No, no. It's covered by rocks and deep deep, dark sand. It's a tree-lined area. There's no place to lay out a beach blanket or a beach ball. There's no place to tuck your, your umbrella into the sand and catch a few rays. No, no. It's a dark, dank-looking spot on the Sea of Galilee, and all you hear standing there are waves crashing. It looks like the most unpresumable uh, place and place that is not one set for catching fish or hearing a word from God in any shape of the imagination. So I was moved as I read and read and was reminded, family, that though the sea is rough and they caught nothing, they did not surrender to the sea. They decided, though we come up empty handed, we've been here all night, we're going to stay until morning comes and try this thing one more time. I don't know who I'm talking to in here today, but I came by to tell you wherever the Lord has led you, whatever seashore you're standing on, whatever water's edge you're nearby. Don't you give up. Don't you walk off. Don't you walk away. Don't get jaded because you seem unsuccessful. You have to trust that though the waves may be rocky, your God can control the winds and the waves. He can guide the ocean and the seas and he can deliver you what you need in the time you need it. Is there a witness here who can testify that when you've decided not to surrender to the sea, God has shown you great things. Yes, we have to find new ways to reach more people. Yes, the needs around us are greater in this world today than ever. But I claim to tell you, we're not surrendering to the sea because the Lord is still here with us. I am so glad today that we've got a God who will always show up. So when the morning came and God showed up and said, cast your net on the right side, they found out that God can do anything but fail. Is there anybody here today who can testify that just when you thought you you'd give up just when you had drug your nets back in the Lord said hold on cast your net one more time and I promise you everything will be all right I'm glad to report today that if we fail if we don't surrender to the sea there is a God who will show up and guide our path oh yeah the blueprint for a believing church is don't surrender to the sea but not just that we got to value every individual's offering. Verses 7 and 8, the Bible says, the beloved disciple, they were out there on the seashore. Jesus is, is there at a distance. Most of them are in the water in a boat already. He looks out and they look toward him. He says, hey, 
Castro that on the other side. What? what? Who's this dude? John says, it's the Lord. Because maybe John had deeper discernment. He, he recognized Jesus better because they were closer. But look at this. John notices Jesus. The others are in the boat dragging the net. And someone, because they went back to shore, had to be rowing. Here's what it meant to me. The Spirit said to me what that means, Eugene, is that though some of us may see the Lord better than others, though some of us can discern a given moment more acutely than somebody else, doesn't mean we don't all see the Lord, uh uh but it may mean in some moments there may be someone more aptly equipped to hear God's voice. It doesn't mean that the rest of us are inconsequential to God's plan in the world. What it means is we have to trust that all of us have something to offer to God that is equally valuable in God's plan around us. So someone saw Jesus, someone hauled the fish, someone rode the boat, and somebody had to say, go left, go right, go straight. It means, family, if we're going to be a believing church, we have to be able to celebrate every individual's offering. So whether you sing tenor, soprano, alto, or bass, the Lord needs you in the choir amen somebody Uh, whether you know how to drive a van with a cdl we need you there Uh, if you can welcome people in the parking lot with a smiling face we need you there if you know how to cook well we need you in the kitchen if you know how to handle finance we need you to help the finance committee if you know something about building engineering we got seventy thousand square feet with which we need help from you there is a place in the lord's kingdom in the ministry of christ that requires every individual offering yep 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 last week as a share we hosted the Isle of School of Theology as they installed the first African-American president and their near 200 year history is a marvelous historic celebration oh you should see it it was powerful and in all of that we invited in pastors from across the Park Hill area building fellowship uh, celebrating collegiality and encouraging Dr. Lee Butler the new president of the seminary So more than 20 pastors showed up and we gathered in the Dones conference room and I'd asked the uh, pastoral courtesies committee, I said, would you be so kind to prepare us something for uh, a light refreshments for our pastoral guests? Oh, sure, pastor, we got it. Don't you worry about it. Wonderful. So I go on about my way, showed up here the night of the event and then came the pastoral courtesies and they sat down a charcuterie tray. But it wasn't just any charcuterie. It was about three feet wide two feet long, and there were things on that board that I couldn't describe to you if I tried. There were four types of cheeses. There were two or three types of pickle. There was a wheat cracker. There was a stone ground cracker. There was a a Ritz cracker. There was a a baked cracker. I said, my goodness. There were three or four different types of meats. There was salami. There was pepperoni. There was capicola. I can't name it all, but I tell you, it smelled awful good. And as they laid it out, then they brought in beverage refreshments. They had lemonade. They had water. They had hot tea, iced tea, coffee. And they laid that out. Then they laid out the napkins and the forks and the plates and the knives and the cups. And I stood back and said, my my God, look at here. And I thought, well, this is cute. But watch this family. As the guests began to roll into the room, as they strolled off with their robes and their, their, their clergy appointments, and they looked to the table and said, oh, look at there. This is some kind of reception. And by the end of the evening, before the worship service began, there were 15 or more folks in the room, and not a one of them walked past that table without remarking of the beauty of the charcuterie board. I came by to tell somebody, you might think that there's nothing significant about your gift, but I promise you, family, every offering has value in the household of faith. I thank God today, because one of them stopped and said, you know, that's what I like about New Hope. Y'all always got us spread. I'm so glad I feel welcome in the house. I've never been here before. One pastor spoke in Spanish and she said, oh, this is bueno bueno in here today. I said, I know you're right about it because every offering has value in the house of faith. Is there a worshiper here who can tell God, thank you, that no matter your gift, it is not insignificant to God. Whatever gift you got, you come bearing and I promise you God will get the glory from your life. Mm-hmm. Blueprint of a believing church is also that we value every individual's offering. <laughs> and then finally, I'm through and I tell you this, that we also have to trust God 
with our collective capacity. Oh, yeah. Verse 11, Scripture says that they had so many fish. It, the, it says, Simon Peter climbed back into the boat, dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Fascinating. That, that you know, there are biblical historians, researchers, and commentary writers who've spent pages upon pages to describe the many different angles of this passage. I've been reading all week long, and at one point I came to the conclusion I don't need to hear another thing about one, five, or three. I don't need any more symbolism of fish versus fishes. I don't need any numerologist to tell me the significance of 153 in the Bible. I don't need anybody to divide that for me any more times the 12 tribes of Israel or anybody else. I lean back and thought to myself, God, I think I hear what you're saying to me. That is, regardless of how many or how few, we have to trust God with our collective capacity. Why? Because the net was not torn. That is, they had no intention of catching that many fish, and the fact that John lists it suggests that maybe it was larger than any catch they'd ever had. It says it was full of large fish, so many, but the net was not torn. It says, family, we have to trust that God may send all kind of persons to the household of faith, and we let God manage our collective capacity. So it means to me, like the many fish they caught, there are several unique backgrounds and, 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 and cultures and, and beginnings that God will send to this net called New Hope Baptist Church. But none of us should fear the broad background of fish will break the net because God will manage our collective capacity it means God can expand the net you just keep on casting it and trust what God is able to do see some of us have been here all our lives and some of us just got here two weeks ago some of us united with this church 30 years ago and some of us united three weeks ago but we're all in the same net because God has collective capacity God can expand the net and, and, and God can welcome in all God desires because of what God is able to do and so I'm so glad as I look around and think about how God sends those who will be a blessing in ministry that God can manage our collective capacity. Reminds me of my childhood growing up that we lived in a neighborhood that was maybe three miles from two of the largest military bases at that time in the country. And so we had people in our community from everywhere in the world where there was a military base. And so our neighborhood looked like the United Nations on any good day that on the next to us on our left was the, the Dahlin family. They were German and Dutch. On the right was the Mason family. They were from Arkansas and Ohio. Across from us for the Lynch family. They were German and from the South in Missouri. And next to them was the Powell family. They were from Georgia, went to HBCUs just like me. And down the block was the Wint family. Uh, they were Asian and Euro-American. And on the other end of the block were, uh, what was the, uh, the family's name? I can't remember, but, but they were from the Southeast as well. That all around our neighborhood, there were individuals from all over the globe, church. And as children, we grew up understanding that no matter who was in the neighborhood, none of us... Uh, were created such a risk that we lose the capacity to build friendships one with another. And so we learn how to eat food from Holland and from Germany. We learn how to enjoy lunch from Asia, Japan, Korea, and the like. We learn how to appreciate a good old Coney Island hot dog, and we learn how to value some ribs and barbecue from North Carolina. We realize that God had put us together for a purpose, family, and I decided a long time ago, I'll always know who I am. See, I come from the continent at the center of the globe, but I thank God that I'm not on that in this world by myself, that God sends all kinds into the net, and that's why we ought to thank God for whoever God sends here.
that many of us in the building are African American, that we come from the mother continent. But some of us are Asian and Latino. Some of us are indigenous and, and otherwise. Some of us are Caribbean and Native American. But the good news is God can manage the capacity of the net. Don't worry about who's in the building. Just trust that God sent us to accomplish his great and glorious will. And every time you get weary, just look to the wall. And over there, you'll see old Dr. King and Marion Anderson. And you'll remind yourself of the value of God's ability to expand the capacity of the net. Reminds me of a story out of Moorhead City, North Carolina. They hold there every year what they call the Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament, where they send ships off from the shore to catch the biggest blue marlin that they can find. Year after year, they host a tournament in Moorhead City. And family, just this past year, they had entries of all sorts and types. The article said that there are those boats in the tournament that could uh, qualify for some of the best oceans, the deepest seas the world has to offer. But down there in Moorhead City, among these grand vessels and well-equipped and outfitted seagoing ships, there are those who have sonars on their boats and GPS equipment to find the fish. Those with computer-operated reels and rods. There was an entry last year from a local fisherman named Greg McCoy. Greg didn't have any sonar on his boat didn't have a GPS fish finder, only had one crewmate on his 50-foot boat, and his name was Scooter. Greg and Scooter set off for five straight days of the competition, 5 a.m. every day, and you know they ain't caught nothing for five full days. But on the end of the fifth day, Scooter turned to Greg. He said, Greg, I know we ain't caught nothing, but I believe today is our day. He said, the article in the New York Times says that Scooter said about 2.15, we're going to catch a fish and we're going to win the tournament. 2.15 came and went, but 15 minutes later, they hooked a fish that hit the reel so hard they said the lure took off a thousand feet into the ocean they said two men strapped themselves to the side of the boat they began reeling and reeling and what they had was a 600 pound blue marlin fish but hear me when I tell you, there's wasn't the best boat in the water. Michael Jordan had a boat in the contest called Catch 23, but the water was too rough for MJ. He didn't fish that day. The winning team from the previous year, they were there. They didn't fish that day. But old Greg McCoy said, me and you, Scooter, we got this thing. They reeled and reeled until they pulled in the 615 pound blue marlin fish. They got back to the seashore. They weighed that fish out, took photographs with the prize. The article says they danced to Tina Turner all the way back to the shore. You gotta read that thing. They shouted and celebrated. Say, we done won this here contest. They got back to the shore and the judge said, wait a minute. The fish has some marks and some bitings. Look like a shark got it on the way back. We can't count the full weight. They turned to the team and said, well, I guess y'all lost. Scooter said, well, we may not have been qualified. Maybe they threw out the fish because of the bite marks. But at the end of the day, we won the contest any way you look at it. I don't know about you today, family, but I look back on the days of my life. I've been disqualified a few times and always had the best equipment. Couldn't afford the most up-to-date trinkets. But I've got a God who's helped me win many a contest. Is there a believer in the building who ain't ashamed to testify that you know that story yourself? That sometimes you fished all day and all night 
ain't caught nothing yet, but said I'm going to go out one more time. And out you went, cast your reel to the sea. And God said, just hold on a little while longer and everything will be all right. All right. All right. So keep on, family. Keep it on. Keep on testifying. God's going to hook your reel. Keep on witnessing. God's going to bring in fish. Keep on sharing your story. It will bless somebody's life. Keep on singing your song. Keep on doing your dance. Keep on using your gifts because it may seem like you fished and caught nothing all night long. Oh, but if you believe and God says so, you can. You can reel in a miraculous catch of what God has for your life. God bless you, church, and amen. Let's all stand together. Yeah. That not every seashore we stand on is pristine and Instagram worthy. Not every water's edge in which our feet are planted is seemingly pleasant. But this story reminds us that even in those moments that God is able to do miraculous work with our lives. We won't always have the perfect circumstances. Huh? And like uh, Greg McCoy, you might just have one crewmate on your ship named Scooter. <laughs> but if you just trust in what the Lord's told you, Cast your net. One more time. Don't you give up. Oh, yeah, the sea is rocky. The waves are blowing. The crash against the boat. Oh, yeah, it's dark. We caught nothing all night, God. We're still here. Don't you quit. Don't walk away. Don't, don't be discouraged by the sea because we've got a God who's the master of the sea. He'll handle your waves and send you what God promised. And so at this time, it's because of who God is and because we all have an experience, a testimony of what God has done when we fished all night long, when, when we kept on parenting, when, when we kept on saving and we kept on trying to mend fences with friends, family and loved ones, when we, when we kept on being committed at our jobs and kind to our neighbors even though nothing seemed to result we, we, we trusted God am I right about it and in those moments the Lord showed up and said hey that, this isn't for naught it, it may not result as quickly as you like but just cast your debt one more time and I'm going to show you what I can do and so we take this moment to extend you a personal invitation to join us in this seafaring journey as we strive to be a blessing to families and individuals in this fellowship, as we endeavor to bless someone outside these walls in our community, as we try to encourage those in nursing homes and under doctor's care, and lift up those who experience grief and bereavement and wrap our arms around children in elementary schools where we tutor and around families who are trying to parent young people in an ever-changing generation that sometimes looks like a dark and stormy sea. But guess what? We've got a God who says, if you trust in me, I'll be with you. Trust. Yeah. Trust. trust. Oh, yeah. Trust. So we invite you today to my left and my right in the balcony. If God so leads you, won't you step out, give the Lord your life. This is the moment to unite with this fellowship to to cast your net. Say, yeah, Pastor, I, I know the Lord. I've just been out for a while. I, I want to reconnect. I want to get my seat on the boat. I want to I wanna cast this thing one more time. We welcome you today. Just step out from your island. That's all you got to do. Just shut all down into your pew. Somebody will move for you. They'll make a way for you. 
They'll step back so you can step out and declare your trust in God. Won't you come today? We welcome you. Oh, trust me, the Lord says. Never leave you, God says. I'll never leave you. Oh, yeah. Anybody know God says, I'll never leave you? Never, God says. I'll never, never leave you. I'll leave you. Yeah. If you, you only trust, trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. If I know God will fight your battles, yeah, yeah. I'll fight your battles. Oh, yeah, God will fight for you. I'll fight your battles. You're reeling and reeling and trying to haul in that fish. You say, God, I can't do it by myself. God will say, I got it. Just trust me. may be seated across the sanctuary. Church says amen. Let's thank God today. <clears throat> amen. I'll take just a brief moment to share with you a, a note about ministry and our fellowship that is very, we believe, gracious and glorious in our sight and grateful for we are. And that is our food ministry. We're thankful for leaders who have helped to lead and sustain this ministry in years gone by. Brother Ted and Luella Beal come to mind, brother and sister, and many, many others who work with this ministry across the years. Amen. And amen. In present time, Deacon David Thompson is guiding that ministry. Uh, but he and I connected through this week, and I share with him that I wanted to share with you the powerful value of this ministry that you might consider it as a place where you can exercise your gift. That we're in a moment where it doesn't matter your background, your education, your wherewithal. When you go to grocery store, you see the same sticker price I see. I see the same sticker price as at Oprah Winfrey and John Travolta and everybody else. They look at peanut butter just like I do. What? You got to be kidding me. Mm. <laughs> and so we feel grateful as a fellowship to have many years of experience in helping families to feed one another. Amen, somebody? We didn't just start yesterday, but what we've seen is the escalating prices of simply trying to feed your family. And so the wonderful thing is, this is not an ask for money. Amen, somebody? Because we, we give because we know God has blessed us to give. This is an ask for your time and your ability. That's all. Amen? At this point, about once a month, we gather as a fellowship and uh, Deacon Tom's told me he's got 15 or so volunteers. And in our last effort to venture, we had something like 40 to 50 boxes of food that had been prepared by a partnership with whom we are networked. They gather together uh, a sampling of foods that can feed a family for so many weeks. They box it. 
we pick it up, we bring it here, and we distribute it to persons in this surrounding community. Down at 40th and Colorado, other organizations in the nearby Northeast area with whom we have partnered for a number of years. And so I'm coming to you today to ask you to consider being a part of this powerful opportunity for ministry. In a moment where it's more expensive to feed a family than ever before. In a time where families are having to make decisions about simple staples just to make it through a month. Amen goes right there. Amen. And so I want you to consider this. We'll bring more information to you next week with some dates and times. But I want to ask you to be thoughtful about the opportunity. And if you said, I, you know, Pastor, I got that one. That, that don't take much thought. Just see me after worship. I'll be at the door out there and we'll connect with you and get you in touch with Deacon Thompson and the food ministry. But I want to ask you to help me first to just thank God for our food ministry. Amen. Would you help me do that? Yep. That along with their regular food service, we provide, we have provided across here. It's leading up to COVID, but we're going to resume. But hadn't since COVID every year we did a Easter, Thanksgiving, and Christmas dinner for up to 200, 250 families and individuals in this neighborhood. Amen, somebody. We, amen. And in those dinners, we gave out Easter gifts, Christmas gifts, Thanksgiving uh, trinkets and toys for kids and families, and just ensured that families in this neighborhood knew that we are here representing Christ on your behalf. That we don't want anybody to be hungry. Amen. And so if you just give that some thought, my friend, my sister, brother, and in the weeks ahead, I want to invite you to, to act on that thought by reaching out to the church office. You can reach us by phone or email, find it on the church website, or you can just connect with me at the door today or Deacon Thompson. I don't see him, but we'll connect you with him. Amen. In this week and week ahead. So God bless you. Thank you so much for your time and for your ear today as we continue to follow the Lord's lead. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand together as we prepare to, prepare to receive benediction. in the Denver metro area. I currently work for Ascentis Counseling, Consulting, and Education. I see both adults and children, and I see folks for a wide array of different issues, including anxiety, depression, ADHD, trauma, including intergenerational as well as racial trauma, family conflict, self-esteem, and identity development. I see folks both in person as well as virtually, if you or someone you know is looking to connect with a therapist and you feel like we'd be a good fit, please reach out. I can be reached at the number below. Thank you. We've all heard that early detection saves lives. Mammograms and pap smears have been the gold standard screenings for breast and cervical cancers for decades. So if that's the case, why is it that white women have the highest incidence of breast cancer but black women have a significantly higher breast cancer death rate. And why is it that black and Native American women have a 65% higher cervical cancer fatality rate than white women? Well, a big factor in this disparity is that more women in these populations and other women of color are often uninsured, underinsured, and lacking the access to medical care to ensure that they receive these screenings. Well, the Colorado Council of Black Nurses is doing something to help save lives. They've received a grant from the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment to help reduce the cancer health disparities and fatality rates in Colorado by identifying women of all races who qualify for free mammograms and free pap smears and connecting these women with facilities where they can receive these free screenings. To learn more about this program and whether you may qualify for free screenings, please plan to meet with a member of the Colorado Council of Black Nurses after church next Sunday, April 14th, directly following Sunday service in the overflow room. And please invite your family and friends who might benefit from this program. Again, the Colorado Council of Black Nurses will be here at New Hope next Sunday, April 14th, directly following Sunday service in the overflow room. This program may save a life. Thank you and God bless.
Amen. Won't you bow with me? As we go, I want to remind you that to your left in our overflow room, our health ministry is providing information about mammograms and screenings for breast cancer screenings for those who do not have health insurance. There are programs in the state of Colorado that provide that for you. Once you just stop at that, uh, those tables in the overflow room to your left on your way out for that information. Amen. God, we just thank you for all the ways you have shown up in this place today. For our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, for what our souls have felt that comes from you. We ask God as we go into this week we've never seen before, that you continue to go into the week with us. And that God, as we stand on the shores of life, casting our nets, remind us that sometimes, though it seems like we've gained nothing, that God, you are moment by moment preparing blessing for our lives as we trust you. So keep us and the families we represent, watch over us one and all, neighborhood, community, and this world around us. And we'll continue, to God, to give you thanks. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And God's people say together, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Encourage someone as you go. Share a hug with your neighbor. We'll see you next Sunday. Thank you.